Hey everyone, Boris Johnson was finally forced to step down this week after weeks of speculation. Wednesday morning saw a landslide of resignations from the cabinet and by the afternoon it was falling apart faster than a cabinet from Ikea. Officially he'll remain in the job until the Conservative Party can get on with choosing a new leader and he can get a reasonable quote from a moving company, but good luck with that right now. Anyway, the last week had started off pretty much the same as previous weeks, but the important thing to remember in all this is that Boris himself was on record saying that it would be, quote, irresponsible to resign. And so at that point, it was pretty much guaranteed that the Prime Minister, known for being irresponsible, would soon be gone. In the end, the straw that broke the camel's back was the emergence of the backstory about the Chris Pincher story. Chris Pincher, of course, is the Deputy Chief Whip who had to step down over a series of allegations made against him. When MPs said that they'd felt the pinch, they weren't talking about the cost of living. So then it was sadly inevitable that it turned out that the Prime Minister had known everything at the time, but once more tried to cover the story up, much as he'd done with the parties at Number 10 and various other scandals, including how many children he has. As an opening salvo to the battle to force the Prime Minister out, Tuesday therefore saw Sajid Javid and Rishi Sunak both turn in their resignations, although there could be an opening for Sajid Javid, because it's only a matter of time before the diversity-obsessed BBC or Netflix remakes The Addams Family and they can cast him as Uncle Fester. And if you think that's a silly proposition, the second most read news story in the BBC's website currently is about how the Friends creator admitting that the show used the wrong pronouns for people. Anyway, who'll be the next PM? If I had to put down 50 quid, I'd say Ben Wallace. The job of PM is for a decade swapped between well-known charismatic people and lesser-known dull people, and it's now time for some boring old stewardship of the country. Certainly the Labour Party and the SNP might regret the fact that their demands for Boris to resign have been answered, because once you remove him in his unique cloud of scandal, the Conservative Party once more looks like a pretty reasonable group of people that the public might vote for at the next election. Anyway, in the meantime, I'm going to be going away on a big six-week holiday next week, although I've pre-prepared some videos that I'll post later in the month. In the meantime, I'll be back at the end of August, by which time we'll probably know who's in number 10 for the next couple of years. So see you then. If you like these, please subscribe.